Welcome to another video. Let's find a and n if this cubic equation has three integer roots. We don't know what a is and we don't know what n is. So, the best thing to do is look at it. It's a cubic equation. Well, Vieta's formula is the first thing that comes to mind because I really don't know what these two are, so it doesn't matter how good I am, I may not be able to solve it. Well, in fact, I can't solve it, but I can actually figure out what the possible values of A and N are. And um, it doesn't look impossible. Let's get into the video. Let's actually talk about Vieta's formula so we can use it and um, make some statements here. So generally, if you have a polynomial, let's say it is um, a n x to the n, so the highest degree of the polynomial is n. Um, sorry, don't confuse it with this n, but I'm just trying to explain the formula. So, and then you have plus a n minus 1, that this is the next integer, and then you have x to the n minus 1, plus all the way until you get to the constant term, which you call a0. If you have a polynomial like this, and it's equal to 0, one thing we know in Vieta's formula is that the sum of all the roots of this polynomial, which are r1 plus r2 plus all the way to rn, must be equal to the ratio of this number to this number multiplied by a negative one. So it's basically negative a sub n minus 1 over a sub n. That is the sum of all the roots. So we can ease it. This is Vieta's formula for sum of roots. Let r1, r2, r3 be the integer roots of the polynomial. Then by Vieta's formula, we got the sum of the roots has to be 1 based on what I just showed you here because the sum of the roots, there are just three of them, will be negative this term, which is the second term here, which is minus 1 over 1. So it's going to be, like I showed, negative minus 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. And we're done. Now, it is easy for me to focus on this because I actually have a number. Okay? Now, I don't know what this is. But according to Vieta's formula, we know that if you have pairwise products and you add them together, you're going to get the guy in the middle here. Okay? That's Vieta's formula again. I don't want to write it again. We know that R1, R2, plus R1, R3, plus R2, R3 is equal to this guy divided by 1, which is equal to A. And the third portion of this, because again, this has just one, two, and three, so we don't have to play with many other things. The third one is that the constant term, you can find the product of the root by Vieta's formula, r1, r2, r3 is equal to negative one raised to power n times a naught over a n. This is for the product of the root. n is the highest degree. So what is the highest degree of this polynomial? It's 3. That's for the product of the root. I did a video about this in the past, and um, I will remember to put the link in the description. But for now, we just want to use Vieta's formula also. r1, r2, r3 will be equal to, if we use this formula here, is going to be minus 1 raised to power 3 times, what is a naught? It's a constant, negative 2 to the n, divided by the first term is 1. What do we get? This is going to be minus 1 times negative 2 to the n, which gives us just 2 to the n. So we got 2 to the n here. Okay, so these are the three equations we need to solve this problem. If we can solve for, find what r1, r2, r3 could be, then we have all our answers. We can find a and we can find what n is since it is 2 to the n. Okay, it's filled with a lot of logical reasoning and elimination. From this point on, I'm going to talk a lot 
and write less because I need space. Okay, now let's look at the very first equation we have. Remember, R1, R2, R3 are integers. Now, let's make an assumption. Assume that all three integers are positive. The sum of three integers can never be equal to one. Unless two of them are zeros and one of them is one. Or you have two of them cancel each other out. Maybe one is positive one and the other is negative one and the other is one. Well, it's possible we can have that. But in that case, when we go here, there's going to be a problem. Assuming that two of them are zeros, well, zero times zero times anything cannot give you a power of two because this one cannot be zero because it is an exponential expression. Two raised to power anything cannot be zero. The smallest this can be is going to be one. Okay, that's if we're even thinking that this can be zero, but the worst we can get is this has to be two, where n equals one. So you see that zero is not an option. If we try out the case of this is negative one, this is, po this is negative something, this is positive something, they cancel each other out, and this is one, well, it means that when you multiply them together, you're gonna get minus one times plus one. So times one, well, there's a minus, so the answer you get is gonna be negative, right? So if it is negative, this has to be negative because once you have one of these negative, the right hand side has to be negative, but this again cannot be negative. So the way things are, the three of them cannot be positive, and the three of them cannot be negative because the sum of three negative numbers cannot be positive. You see that? So, so many eliminations I've done. The three cannot be positive. The three cannot be negative. And you cannot have one of them negative because if one of them is negative, then this will be, the product will be negative. So the best scenario right now is that Two of them will have to be negative so that when you multiply two negatives, they will become positive times a positive, you have a positive. That's the best scenario we can have. And it helps a lot if you can figure that out. And if you go to the first one, you're gonna have negative, negative, positive. Now, clearly, the positive number has to be bigger than the negative numbers in order to get a negative, a positive outcome when you add them together. So, I've talked a lot. But the conclusion is that two of the roots must be negative and one of them will have to be positive. That's it. Once you figure that out, you're good. The way this question was designed, it was designed for you to think that way. It reduces the number of guesses that you make. So first thing we're saying, so without loss of generality, already specified, okay, without loss of generality, I already said, let these two be the um, negative ones and let this be the positive, okay? Um, let R1 be greater than zero and let R2, R3 be less than zero, okay? So now let's start thinking about this guy. If the product of any set of numbers is a power of two, then all the numbers you're multiplying must be powers of two. At least their magnitude, okay? So, this is what I'm saying. It could be positive or it could be negative, but if you ignore the sign, the numbers you're multiplying together must be powers of two, either two, four, two, four, eight, 16, or there must be ones because one does not change anything. Because otherwise, if you put any other number, it cannot be a power of two, because any number on the right hand side is purely two raised to power something. So every number that we have will have to be. And remember, we're saying that these two numbers must be negative. 
And this has to be a power of two and it has to be positive. So let's start with the smallest option we have. Let's say R1 is one, which is a power of two. Remember the other two numbers will have to be powers of two, but they have to be negative, remember? Okay, so let R1 be one. So let R2 be equal to R3 and be equal to negative one. Let's try it for the first, we, see it works here because it's gonna be one times minus one times minus one, which makes this one. So that means two raised to power zero equals one. That's if we accept n in this case to be equal to zero. But let's see if it works here. Well, here we're gonna have one plus minus one plus minus one. Is it equal to one? No. So this combination does not work. R1 equals two, and let's try this, and then R2 equals R3 equals negative one. So let's try it. Put a question mark here, actually. Put a question mark here. We're gonna have two plus negative one plus negative one. What does this give us? This gives us zero. Okay, it's getting better because now we've increased the gap between this and this. So, but this still does not work. So we're gonna try another number, R1 equals, so remember, there is no other combination that's gonna help us, and these two must be negative. So let's try, what's the next power of, of two? Four. So try R1 equals four, and then R2 equals R3 equals negative one. Remember, they must be negative. So if we try this, what do we come up with? So if we try this, we're gonna end up with um, here. We're gonna have four plus negative one plus negative one equals one. Is that true? Well, this is four minus two, it gives us two. Oh, no, but we're supposed to get one. The sum of the roots should give us one, which means this number is too big or we're not subtracting enough minus two is gonna work. So we can do this, we can, so this does not work, okay? Let's cancel this, and then we're gonna say try R1 equals four, R2 equals negative two, and R3 equals negative one. Ha, huh. it looks like that's gonna work. We're gonna have four plus minus two plus minus one equals one. That works. Nice. You see how we narrowed everything down? Okay, now, we got one precisely when we have four. Wait, does it work down here? Yes, because four times minus two times minus one is eight. So we can easily say that, huh? This means that four times minus two times minus one equals eight, which is equal to two raised to the power n. That, that's two cubed. That tells us that n is equal to three. Is there anything else we're looking for? Oh yeah, we gotta find what a is. Well, we can find a by using this formula. One second. <laughs> okay, now, so this is going to be 2 cubed, which implies that n is equal to 3. Clearly, this is correct. Now, if n equals 3, what would a be? We can easily find a. Remember, a is this combination. So, a equals r1 times r2, which is 4 times negative 2 plus r1 times r3, four times negative one, plus r2 times r3, negative two times negative one. So a equals, tap, ta-da-da, tap, tap, what is it? 
This is negative 8 minus 4 plus 2. Negative 10. So we found one set of solutions, n equals 3, a equals negative 10. Okay, now let's think if we can find the next set of solutions. Okay, the only way we could get 1 from a combination if this is 4 is if this is negative 2, negative 1. Or if we switch it, but if switching them doesn't change the fact that we're looking for these two numbers. So let's go higher. Instead of using 4, we have to use another power of 2. The next one is going to be 8. Okay. If you try 8 and you put this to be negative 4, because remember we're aiming for 1, so make them as close as possible. 4, negative 4. Yeah, you're not, you're not going to get 1 because now the gap is getting higher because the next number you're going to be trying is 16 and 16 minus 8 is even farther apart. So the closest you can get to 1 is if you have this combination. Okay, no other combination is going to work because the gap is getting wider. Well, I don't have a proof for that, but it is very logical and common, common sense. I want to say commonsensical, but logical and easy to see. So here, I've got this, no other combination of integers produces one as some, meeting the condition that we said. Therefore, A equals negative 10 and N equals 3 is the only solution. Leave a comment in the comment section if you figure out something, because usually I make a video and it's how I'm thinking, but some people are just smarter than me and they just find the answer so easily. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.